Hi, I'm Brad Heath, Double D Trailers. I'm really excited today over this new model. It's the Safe Tac One Horse Bumper Pull. We've never built one of these, had lots of requests for it. And uh, so yeah, the engineers did a fantastic job. Just want to do a quick walk around on the outside. So I went ahead and added in some, uh, trying to utilize every inch of space for storage uh, and keep everything as compact and as short as possible. Uh, this trailer is 5,200 pounds and has a tongue weight of only 600 pounds empty. And the luxury of that is we can tow with the full size SUV or a half ton pickup uh, with weight distribution. So uh, that's something that we've not been able to accomplish in the past. And the reason that we could do that is because it's only a one horse, we can easily move the axles a little bit farther forward than normal to offset some of that tongue weight and we know exactly where the horse is standing. So that's why it won't work for a two horse because if you move the axles and you put a horse in the back stall, then you end up with negative tongue weight. Outside water faucet, dual propane tanks. I did go ahead, uh, a manual crank jack is uh, standard on this model and I added the electric jack for this one. At only a 600 pound tongue weight, um, the standard jack will be more than sufficient. As we continue to walk around, you'll notice not any bolts or screws or rivets on the outside. Uh, it's an aluminum exterior with a galvalite interior and then Z-frame technology for the chassis and the roof bows. And the cool thing about Z-frame is it's actually strong uh, stronger than steel in tensile ratings. And so we can use uh, smaller material to save on weight and it doesn't rust. So we sort of get the best of both worlds between steel and aluminum with the Z-frame. Uh, the only thing this is is the refrigerator vent from the inside and of course the hot water system here. And this would be the exhaust for the propane or excuse me, the furnace. This is gonna be your power hookup. So the cord that you just saw in the front of the trailer will plug into this and then you can plug the other end to your power source, okay? A uh, couple of windows, one for the horse, one for the kitchen area up front. All right, let's take a look at the horse area. I did go ahead and add a ramp to this one. I like ramps. We see less skinned legs and knees on ramp loads versus step up. And if we just drop that, you can actually lift it with your toe. So I always do what we call the toe check on ramps to make sure that they're easy to operate and just doesn't require a lot of effort, okay? We do mount the ramps at a slightly lower pivot point than what some of the manufacturers will do. And I do that because obviously if the pivot point were here, this ramp would be more steep and your horse would have a greater risk of slippage. But because of the low pivot point, we end up with the minimal incline, as you can see, and just really reduces the risk of a horse falling down or slipping, trying to go in and out of your trailer. This is the safe tack compartment. So, uh, and when it is exclusive to Double D Trailers, um, we have the rights on that, so you will not find it anywhere else in the United States. Most slant loads, the horse will load through this narrow door. And the problem is, well, horses don't like to go through claustrophobic spaces. And uh, it's also dangerous for the handler because if you're walking a horse in, and you tie his head off and then there's nowhere for you to go, so you're trapped. And we've really solved the issues with that, with the safe tack. Uh, it's very well balanced. You can roll it around with one hand operation. There's a positive latch on the back. We'll get that later. I'm gonna just go ahead and latch it. Now take a look at that. You've got the entire back end of the trailer open for loading and unloading. There's no, not any obstructions in here. 
uh, it, it's very inviting. We do an extra partition standard. I'm not aware of anyone else that does that. And the reason for is if you've got a, you know, a 1200 pound thoroughbred in here and you've been hauling on a three or four hour trip, the moment you open these back doors, the guy's ready to come out of there. He's just tired of riding. With the extra partition, it will hold your guy in place until you can decide when you want to unload, untie the head. We've got a divider between you and the horse to prevent uh, an unruly horse perhaps trying to injure you. And this is spring loaded. So when you unlatch that with the one hand paddle latch, these are all rubber so we don't get any vibration off of that, which I really like. But this will swing around and just stay against the wall. And of course from here, it's very easy to bring in a guy, as you can see, tie off the head. I like these lay flat tie rings. We don't have to worry about poking an eye or an eye injury occurring from that. And these things are welded directly to the galvalite. I've seen some in the past that were bolted on, as are the exterior loops, and a horse can actually break those bolts out. Drop down window is standard. I'll show you how that operates once we go back on the outside again. And of course a sliding window on the butt side and this window will slide and there's a screen over that. Uh, this would be the cowboy slash cowgirl shower. Uh, simply unlatch that, fold the lid down. There's a hot and cold handle in here and a shower one. So you can actually just pick this up and stand here and take a, a shower in the horse area. And we have the walkthrough door standard on all trailers. So you could easily walk through, utilize this horse space, walk back out. Uh, we did do a rear header pad on this. That's a standard feature on all of our trailers. And the purpose behind that is if you get a guy that is actually, when he tries to load, if he were to rear up or backing out by chance, we just want to make sure that we've got as much protection there for your horse as possible. The safe kick wall system is standard. That's a technology that we developed many years ago. A majority of trailers have a rubber wall lining and we used to use that too. My complaint with the rubber is often a horse will paw, and then as he does that, he would scrape the rubber off the wall, and you end up with this mechanical fastener exposed, which can cut a horse. So we've made some changes, and you can actually see that flex of when a horse kicks it. So it will, it will absorb the impact. Uh, there's a block of high density styrofoam insulation behind that and it, it works quite well. The safe uh, kick wall system has been in our production for many years now with, with great success. The 2x8 pressure treated pine flooring is standard with a rubber mat on top. Uh, we probably, a majority of our clients order trailers with rumber, I would say at least 90, 90 to 95%. These days we rarely do one without the rumber. And if you're not familiar with rumber, it's, uh, it's made from recycled tires. So it's rubber all the way through. You can see the bolts that go through the chassis. So if you were to look up underneath the trailer, and maybe we'll do that in a moment, you see the cross members going across, the bolt going through, sticking out on the bottom side, and this board, which is approximately uh, an inch and three quarters thick, you just see the bottom side of the board. So this is the floor. Because it's rubber, it's actually forgiving, so you'll get some flex for your horse. Uh, it transfers less heat and noise and vibration back to horses' feet and legs in comparison to a wood floor or certainly an aluminum floor, which we highly recommend against on the aluminum. Uh, urine can oxidize aluminum and plus the aluminum transfers a lot of noise and vibration. So rumber I like, it eliminates the stall mat. It's a lifetime warranty. It's very easy to me, it's the, the lazy person's floor. So once you've gone on a, a long ride, when you get back home, you don't have to worry about dragging the heavy mats out hosing your floor down, whether it's a wood floor or an aluminum floor, and then allowing it to dry and then pull the mats back in. So uh, in my book, I love rumber. It's been around for many, many, many years and it's quite durable. We've never replaced the board. There's no lip or anything here, so obviously the, 
uh, if you're hosing it out, everything would just run out of the back without issue. So the safe tack saddle compartment, uh, this one we, we added a brush tray and a blanket bar just so that you guys could see what that would look like. These saddle racks are removable. So if you wanted to lift one out and I don't know, throw a bell of hay or something in there, you certainly could. There are four positions so you can adjust the height of that without issue. And they work better when they're not freshly painted. Bridle hangers are standard. I think three come with this model. We added a few extras on this one. And then of course the light. And when you close that, you just get a nice solid close, no rattle there. This is very durable. Uh, we've never had any issue at all with, this, with the safe tack swing out compartment. Keeps your tack and gear clean and away from uh, the horse area so you don't have to worry about the saddles getting really dirty and dusty as you would on a conventional rear tack, which has an open top. Now, this is a hay bale holder. Because it's a one horse, and chances are you'll be towing this with an SUV or a, a pickup truck, there may not be enough space to haul hay. You simply, this is a square bale. You would stand the bale up on its end, so the bale is here, and then just pull a strap around it. Um, I have some folks to ask, and this is the latch I was talking about earlier that works really well. So I have some folks to ask and they say, well, what about the hinges? If you add all that weight and a bell of hay, uh, this handle is standard, I really like that. What about the hinges? Well, these hinges are, are actually solid steel and they're designed to withhold uh, probably four times the weight of what you'll ever put in this box. With that said, the Safe Tack has been in production since 1999. Uh, well over 20 years and we've never had a hinge failure. So I feel quite confident in those. I'm gonna close these doors back. Um, oh, I love these latches. One hand operation, you simply roll it around. It's a cam latch and close down. These are lockable and it's just a positive lock. So you don't have to wonder hey, is my door latched properly or not? One of the biggest questions we receive from clients is they don't like the rubber straps, but I can tell you this strap is actually the same thing that's used to hold the hood down on an 18-wheeler semi, Mack truck, freight liner. Next time you're on the interstate, look at their hood and you'll see these straps. Uh, they hold very well. And one reason that I like the, the rubber is they just hold the ramp up tight there's no rattle there, and you, you, you won't pull those, you won't pull those off. I haven't sold a replacement rubber strap in over uh, 10 years, so they do hold up very well. LED lights are standard for all of the exterior and the interior. Uh, we're still using a halogen on some of the spotlights, but uh, I think we are offering those as an optional LED, and of course the uh, optional load light up at the top. Now, we'll generally do a running board standard on one side of the trailer, and I don't put one on the opposite side. It's just something else for a horse to paw on, or uh, if you've got a guy tied up here, you can paw on that. So we just don't really see a, a need to have it on the opposite side. I love these drop-down windows. Years ago, the window latch itself was up high. And I reached out to the manufacturer and I said, look guys, our clients can't reach these windows. The latch is too high. I mean, my wife's only five foot two and you know, she's jumping up to get it. So we moved the latch to a mid latch. It's one hand, particularly with the stopper. So you simply squeeze and it, it's easy to do. I see a lot of windows that are manufactured with the bars that come down with it. And you have to have one hand on the bar and one hand on the window. They're very heavy, they'll smack you in the head. So I like this window. You can latch it in the down position while traveling. It does have a sliding feature on it and a screen over that portion if you just wanted to leave the window up and then slide, this, uh, slide the window for some airflow. And of course the bars fold independent from the glass. So you can leave those up or uh, down while traveling. 
Okay, we did go ahead and add, uh, this is just the fresh water, city water connection here, and we put an outside receptacle right there. Okay. The weight of this trailer, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier to be in our specs, but this particular one was 5,200 pounds as equipped. And what I'm uh, super excited about is the tongue weight is only 600 pounds. Most half ton vehicles have about anywhere from an 800 pound to uh, 1,500 pound tongue weight rating or capacity on the vehicle. And it's very difficult to achieve a, a safe trailer that you could haul with a full size SUV or, or a pickup truck and you will be able to do that with this one. I went ahead and added the weight distribution brackets. Uh, of course, you'll need your own weight distribution hitch, which any hitch accessory store in your area or an RV camper place, just take truck and trailer to the RV store. They'll hook you up a one-time setup and you don't have to worry about it, okay? And just one more thing about, I mentioned it earlier, no bolts or screws or rivets in this sidewall. This is a watertight barrier. If you bang on the side of this, it's solid because it's insulated 100% front to rear, uh, including the, the front dress, even before the living quarters, it's standard insulated. And we use a, a 3M chemical bonding system and once it's bonded, it, it, it will not come loose. So I love, uh, it's more expensive, but it prevents having metal on top of metal, which we would have with a mechanical fastener. And as a trailer goes down the road, it really flexes and vibrates a lot and it's just noisy inside. So uh, this is one of the technologies that we've worked with 3M on to uh, make sure that we eliminate that rattle and just keep the ride as quiet as possible. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention was the safe bump roof. We'll go over that once we finish the living quarters. Actually, let's go ahead and do that right now before I forget it. Uh, stall size on this, this is a, an oversized stall. It'll support a guy uh, easily up to a 16-2 thoroughbred, 12, 1300 pound range. They'll fit comfortably in that. The older style safe bump that we manufactured years ago uh, I really liked that roof. It looked great. Uh, it was smooth across here, but the only way to construct that was we had seams every four feet and a lot of caulking or sealants that would deteriorate over the years. And the thing just leaked. In addition, we didn't have enough bracing in the roof. Um, and in a rollover situation, uh, there was a, a great risk of a horse being ejected. So we added in the Z-frame roof bows. This is a one piece fiber composite roof and fiberglass with, as well as other material. And fiberglass is one of the best insulators that we use uh, on planet Earth. In fact, your home is probably insulated with fiberglass. And so we added this Z-frame roof bow right into the mold every 16 inches. And in a rollover situation, uh, it greatly reduces the risk of a horse being ejected. And it is quite forgiving. If a guy rears up against it, he's not gonna hurt his head. Obviously, if he rears on that, He's just gonna smack his gourd. <laughs> There's no way around it. Again, walkthrough door standard. I made this one so that it would open up into the horse area. Once you get to your show, ideally you'd probably clean this out and be able to sweep it out, utilize the shower, utilize this for storage if needed. And then close the door when not in use. So this has a toilet and a cowgirl shot. I don't have one of the switches on somewhere. Sorry about that. But uh, it's it's quite roomy. I don't know if this is appropriate on videos or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you can get a visual of I'm a five foot ten, 155 pound guy, and everything's easy. I can reach the toilet paper. I can shut the door, and I still have plenty of space between my knees. So if it's a six, you know, six, two person, they'll be able to fit in here without any problems. I did go ahead and add a couple of cubby holes here just to throw some towels in, washcloths, uh, bottles of shampoo, whatever that you might need. And then of course the carpet and an insulated wall there. Roof mount air conditioner, uh, 13.5 BTU. I did do a furnace in this model and uh, we can do an air conditioner with the heat strip 
but the heat strips are really more of a chill chaser. It's a mild climate, you can flip it on. It sort of works like a, a hair dryer by circulating the air over the warm coil. The furnace actually uses propane and uh, it will ignite a flame about yay high with a blower. So it will really heat this room up quite quickly with the furnace. Thermostat right here. Um, the living quarters in this trailer I really like. You have a tank monitor system for the black tank underneath, uh, switches to your hot water heater. I put a window in here with these nice shades over it. You don't have to worry about the, the shades, you know, clanking or breaking loose at the bottom. These are designed for, uh, for the trailer. A light right there. And we, again, we tried to utilize as much space as possible for storage, just really squeezing this trailer for all it's worth for every uh, ounce of space. Your six gallon hot water heater, which is a direct spark, a three cubic refrigerator. Now these will operate off of 110 volt or propane. Uh, my preference is propane. Uh, it's very efficient. There's not any compressors in, a, in an RV refrigerator of this size. And one of the biggest uh, things that we hear are clients that receive their new trailer and they say, hey, I turned my refrigerator on and it's not making any noise. And it's not supposed to. That's a good thing. No noise whatsoever. Now, I did go ahead and add a, a powered roof vent in this one and it operates its remote control. It has a rain sensor on top. So if this vent is open, if the climate's mild and you just wanna open the windows and open the screen door on your trailer, uh, it's bi-directional. So it'll pull air out or it will blow air in. There's also variable speed. It's a pretty snazzy fan. So it's thermostat, you can set the temperature uh, of what you're looking for and it will adjust the speed of the fan to try and achieve that temperature. And then of course, if it is to start raining outside, that rain sensor will automatically close your lid for you. I put a, uh, sorry to jump back and forth here, Brady. I put a stainless steel sink, uh, just a, a single style in this one. It works fine for washing your hands or dishes brushing your teeth in the morning time, that type thing. A two burner cooktop. So if you want to do some cooking, and of course the lights and fans there, and then a, a, an RV microwave. Let me show you the storage in the front. We've got some really good latches on these cabinet doors so they, they will not come open during transit, which is what I was looking for. I was able to design a closet in here. So you do have a decent amount of hanging slash closet space for uh, your wear. And then of course, more storage here and more storage there also. This is what we call our hangout living quarters. We utilize the same wall and insulation that's standard in the horse area for the living quarters as well. So we don't go back in and add more insulation and paneling. It just adds to the cost and the weight. Same thing on the roof. The roof is already insulated, so no need in adding more weight to it. Uh, the dinette, I love this thing. Of course, it will drop down into a bed. Uh, your water tank is underneath here, but there, there is some storage. Mm -hmm. Turn this back down. Same thing on the other side. Uh, I angled this table so you can kind of slide in and out here. And there's more storage back there. Quite a bit of space actually in that whatnot compartment. Again, this does fold down into a bed. Uh, I added a receptacle here and of course some cell phone chargers uh, while you're sleeping and you can plug those things in. If I lift this up. Sorry, that made a lot of noise. The cushions are tight. I wanted these things as tight as possible so they don't move on you. Again, I'm five foot 10. I'm fully stretched out and this is quite comfortable actually. So you could sleep on here without any problem at all. Okay. And then of course that just pops back up. 
Uh, the sweep out feature is something standard that we do. We're one of the few manufacturers that actually elevates the floor higher from the horse area. And if you take a look here, you can see the differentiation or the difference between the two. It's about a four inch difference. There's two reasons behind that. Number one, this slant wall goes all the way to the chassis. So if you get rear-ended or in a head-on collision or you've got a guy that just slams against that wall in an accident, you don't have to worry about this wall kicking out or flexing from the bottom. The other thing, it, so it's a, it's a lot stronger. We just get a lot of strength from tying the whole trailer in with this slant wall. The other thing, um, if you have, when you're hosing your trailer out, if the front end is dropped a little bit, the water can actually run up underneath the wall inside of your dressing room or living quarters. And of course that can't happen with this design. Now I did a mat in the floor. Uh, I just wanted something that was durable, not necessarily, you know, the prettiest, but just functional and easy to maintain. And because we elevated this floor, it eliminates the lip. So you don't have a, a tow trip going in and out of your door. A lot of companies I see, you have to step out of the trailer over the door threshold just to get in and out. Camper door with screen. Let's see if I can pull this out without. You could just leave that closed if you like and the door open. We did a cool gas shock on this thing. So when you open the door, it just goes around automatically and stays in place. So I really like that. And of course you could, you could roll this up as well and utilize that window. Uh, the graphics on this trailer are standard. We have choices of graphics on our website, so you could go to, to that. You could choose the style of the graphic as well as the color of the graphic, and there's typically no additional cost for that or very minimal if you want something sort of out of the ordinary. The roof rail frame and chassis, this would be every area that you see black. Now the top of the roof is white. We don't paint the whole thing black. It's only the curved piece just right here. We do a nice accent stripe around it and then we'll paint the chassis to match whatever that roof rail is. This, because it is hand painted, you could select the color if you wanted to match to your tow vehicle. All we need is that color code and the guys can spray it that color. Again, typically no additional cost for that. Some of the tri-coat colors, there may be a small upcharge, but nothing ridiculous. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Check out our website at www.com. Doubledtrailers.com. Thanks so much.